Blizzard Dev Leak explains why Jeff Kaplan quit Overwatch. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 oh. Uh-oh. Let's see it. It's time. This is why Jeff quit. What's going on, guys? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. For a second, I thought that was Jeff talking. Like, just for, like, fucking a fraction of this. I was like, wait, what the fuck? A YouTuber friend of mine, Sir Swag, released a video where he outlines quotes from an anonymous source that he has from Blizzard Entertainment, uh -huh. a developer that knows the inner workings of what was going wrong on Team 4, the dev team that was working on Overwatch 2 and the now cancelled PvE. I reached out to Sir Swag as a precaution to say, hey, bro, is this legit? Yes, it sure is. He has my confidence and trust. We'll break down the details of the leak and as well, I think this illuminates it's a lot of the growing story arc of Jeff Kaplan leaving and the inner turmoil with the company. The anonymous source says the cancellation was 1000% an upper management executive issue. It was all about profit margins, that they were looking at a game like Diablo Immortal, which was making $2 million a day, and that changed the ex- $2 million a day. Bro, I think we need to make one of these games. Like, we, yeah, we're in the wrong business, guys. We have been messing this up. Yo, I, I could, we could make a much better one. Expectations for the yeah, suits. Starforge the PvE online. was looked at as increasingly irrelevant and not going to earn money in the long term. Keep in mind that just the live service multiplayer game that they already had all of a sudden turned on a new revenue stream just by adding a battle pass and cosmetics. Do I you feel like it's hard for me to just automatically believe this because like it just seems like it's too based to be true. Like, it just confirms so many biases that, like, ooh, I don't know. You can see why higher executives would look at that and say, why do we want to invest in making this big, complicated, expensive game when we can make money in easier ways? Yeah, so yeah. So these claims exactly. stand to reason to me, but it gets worse. During the pandemic, there was slowed production, and as progress got worse and they struggled to meet deadlines, there began a vicious cycle that was doomed to fail. The leak talks about talent leaving or getting reorganized uh -huh. to other projects, but also keep in mind that there was the lawsuit which maybe some employees left due to protest but as the production <laughs> or due got to other worse, reasons they actually pulled resources from the team which was a doomed to fail strategy uh -huh. and a little bit at odds because the team is always publicly talking about how they've expanded the team doubled the size of the team but no offense when they bring that's on what they always say they said we doubled the size of the team and we cut the content in half boom problem solved some of the new developers, they are often quite young, and no offense uh -huh. to young people, but a lot of the best devs and the seasoned veterans, the ones that usually have enough experience or knowledge, well, those are beginning to get thin as many of them have left to other companies. So the anonymous source speaks quite contrary to a lot of the public messaging that we're getting from Blizzard. Uh -huh. If you pay close attention, multiple Blizzard devs in the chats, live streams, BlizzCon line, the blog posts, say how they've doubled the size of the team, increased way bigger than they've ever been before, but at the same time, they're admitting publicly as well that the workload they had was too much. It really sucks that the developers have to... I don't think that's necessarily doublespeak. They were just trying to scale up and they couldn't do it. ...be themselves the marketing mouthpiece for the game as well. Uh -huh. So they sort of have to tell the lies that Bobby Kotick would want them to tell. Keep in mind, this is the same guy that would reportedly write verbatim the responses that his figureheads would say in response to the lawsuits. So you really have to be careful... That was not reported. That, that literally was proven to happen absorbing any of the PR speak from anyone yeah. at Blizzard as if it's them speaking themselves. No, no, no. They're speaking for Bobby. So they talk about the That's team right. size. It's Bobby's world and we're just living in it, guys. Keep that in mind. Banding, but does that mean part-time work? Does that mean the commissioned artists that they have to churn out the skins content for the game that you have to imagine they pay less than a full-time employee? You're not really going to pin them down on any logically congruent storyline because somehow they both want us to believe that the team is massive, big, and capable, but also they have to apologize for canceling the massive, big project that they had and instead transferring all their energy to something that is lower on production cost 
in a higher return on investment as Selling opposed to battle making passes. a wonderful game that will build the franchise's IP strength overall. No, Bobby doesn't like that. He likes profit margins, small investment, big payoff instead of a bigger investment and also a big payoff. No, no, no. The amount of profit is all that matters. Another contradiction from the- I think we could have Gotcha in Overwatch 3. You know, like imagine if the Reinhardt suit with the ax would make him do more damage to armored characters. Or make him like, if he had the ax on, he would ignore the armor and he would just hit their health pool instead. Like that would be pretty cool. Anonymous leak, they said a lot of the It'll developers be left when the work from home policy was enacted, meaning that employees had to actually live near the Blizzard campus where it's very expensive. This is directly in contrary to Jared Ness, who says the opposite publicly. But again, I feel like this is a case where Blizzard's PR speak tries to have it both ways. Did people quit because of the work from home? If they well, did- Well, I mean, let's be real. There's probably bad shit going on at the company and people are leaving because of it, but they don't want to just go out public and be like, yeah, shit is all kinds of fucked up, guys. Like, y'all have no idea. Like, this place is a fucking disaster. This place is a zoo, okay? So, yeah, executives are assholes. Bobby's a dick. Uh, the people that are running the company don't even know what the video games they're doing are. Uh, you know, some guy told me yesterday he thought Overwatch was Counter-Strike, and uh, he's the product manager. So I don't know how that's going to go, but we're trying to figure things out one step at a time. And, uh, oh, yeah, uh, there's also, like, they, they said now we have to pay for lunch. Yeah, we don't get free lunch anymore. Like, they're not really going to come out and say that, right? They're going to be like, guys, listen, hey, you know, we've had some struggles, but things are going well. Of course, that that's would what they're going to ultimately say. have a significant effect on your productivity. No, and if the team is big and capable, well, where's the product for it? It really sucks to have to have these developers speak on the behalf of the company. Which is funny because with WoW, like Blizzard said, hey, we're adding in like a hundred new employees for the WoW team, and we're getting more content for WoW. That's crazy, huh? Wow, how does that happen? us these lies that just don't add up but ultimately uh -huh. we know who to blame it should have been no surprise to anyone the anonymous source goes on to say something that i think we all know is that the devs really just did the best with what they were given and as they've said publicly developing the talent trees for every single hero in the game was an insane proposition I it's almost stupid it was stupid to even try to do that they weren't designed with that in mind Every single class has the same type of talent tree. That's just, it's dumb. I wonder if they would have been better off just like taking eight heroes or so and making that game first just with them. Because from Reddit responses from the devs, they've told us that it was easier to design a brand new hero for PvP than to do the skill trees, which had all these different options for PvE, even though it doesn't have I, to be- I probably would believe that because having to balance all of those things, remember Blizzard did this in like Shadowlands and BFA? Where, like, all they would do is run around putting out fires because some sort of, like, weird trinket interaction, you know, is overpowered for fire mages on three different fights. Like, it, it, yeah, it, it probably would be awful to try to balance all of that shit as balanced somewhere between 30 and 50 talents for each hero in the game that's an insane amount of content especially when you think of like an action rpg i'm thinking diablo borderlands 3 yeah. there's only a handful of characters in the game and then they span off into a few what they should have done is what they did with warcraft 3 so like in warcraft 3 there was like this separate rexar mission that you could do that was supposed to simulate what world of warcraft was supposed to be and, like, you would play through that mission and level up Rexar and get more powerful and, like, talk to different characters. It's, like, really, really cool. And they should have just done that with, like, probably, I, I think the best character to do it with probably would be, like, Soldier 76. Because it's, like, the most traditional, like, RT, or sorry, not RTS, FPS character, and he has a heal. So there's, like, a lot of different ways that you can, like, micromanage him. Like, they should have just had it be Soldier 76 or something like that, like playing through individual missions, and then start there so at least people have something to work off of or go off of.
countries, but it's not so much more than the amount that they're saying there. If they did try to do that game, it would have been the biggest action RPG type game of all time. So it's really heartbreaking to see them not be given the resources to make that game of the decade that it could have been. But it makes sense when you think to the way that Activision... Well, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it would have, maybe it wouldn't have. Like, I'm not going to just be like, oh, yeah, it definitely would have been so amazing. Like, I mean, like, I mean, Destiny, Warframe, like, all these games are really good, but they're not, like, transforming the game industry. Every single game is about them. Like, they're not on the level of, like, Valorant or anything like that. So, like, I, I'm not going to just be like, yeah, this game would have been so fucking great maybe maybe not blizzard king runs all of their ip candy crush call of duty uh -huh. they want overwatch to be like that and it needs to be a different game if they wanted to make a real game instead of a cash flip with a low investment requirement and high return on investment aka milking out ips and giving the least amount of product for the most amount of money it's a really unfortunate business strategy because if you look at a game like world of warcraft which is just outrageously massive overwatch 2 could have been the next thing it could have reached towards the m MMO aspirations that Aaron Keller talked about in the You want to know what my hot take on this was that uh I actually don't think that they should have gone about it with like the heroes. I think they should have had it be like you're your own character rather than playing one of the heroes of Overwatch. Like you just can't like having a hero shooter that has like 50 different characters balancing all of that like why? Because number 1 like you can give people a way to experience the story secondhand that way while also giving people ways to like play individual characters. Uh, I think it would have been fine. Isn't Valorant like that with agents? Yeah, I guess it kind of is. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think that was the mistake is trying to make it to where people were playing heroes blog in my previous video it could have reached that size of game but at the moment the best thing we're going to get is like a full campaign in like years of time which i suppose yeah. is better than nothing but it's nowhere One near the artistic the vision time. of what these devs wanted to do and that's where i want to transition to talk about jeff kaplan where it's blatantly obvious now that he was not signing up for any more of this ATV IBS. And while you guys know I had a lot of philosophical differences with Jeff over the years, I'll be straight up, the guy just did not like me at all. I was a thorn in his side for years, but I always respected the man's integrity and artistic vision and very unique route to arriving to a competitive multiplayer game that was unlike any other. Because Jeff worked on the WoW team for so many years, and as Aaron yes. Keller said in his blog post, the team were WoW devs, they thought of things in more of the magical player immersion point of view. Whereas other competitive titles, let's say Valorant, are all about the competition every step of the way. Which does have its benefits, I will admit, but you can see the weaknesses clear as day. The characters are less defined, they often aren't as imaginative or intuitive, so over the years, I had to grow a level of respect for the alternate route that guys like Jeff Kaplan or the now former lead hero designer Jeff Goodman would take to design. They look to maximize the fun first and worry about the competitive viability later. It gave us the GOATS meta we were trapped in, but it also gave us 2016's game of the year. So I tend to take the good with the bad. Yeah, I think it's more important for a game to be fun than for it to be balanced at high competitive levels. But I do think that the problem is that if a game isn't balanced at all and there's like obvious outliers, then it's not fun for anyone. Like I remember like Sojourn is a good example for this, right? Is like at what level is Sojourn OP? Well, at Grandmaster, I'm pretty sure it was. I saw Defran complaining about it all the time. But like if you're playing in silver or gold, Sojourn's probably not OP and it's fine. So it depends on the way the character's designed. Bridget ruined Overwatch? I don't know. Like, people say that a lot. I wasn't playing at the time. Now, let's look back to quotes from the 2019 announcement of Overwatch 2. Keep in mind that many of us believe that this was pushed out the door because Bobby Kotick wanted to change the news cycle surrounding BlizzCon with growing controversy over the Blitzchung incident. So they had to come out with the big announcement then, even though it's pretty clear in hindsight, they weren't really ready to do so. On I would believe that right off the bat. Yep, that's that, that sounds like a Bobby activity right there. Yep, I believe it.
stage, Jeff explained the endlessly replayable missions that they called hero missions. And he said it's what adventure mode is to Diablo. It was aimed to have a progression system Wouldn't with custom cool? abilities and talents. Then he went on to explain that they wanted to redefine the sequel. And this is where I always thought it was very tone deaf to speak this way, because while Jeff was trapped at Activision Blizzard, where they're used to sequel churn like Call of Duty coming out every year, losing all of the progress, cosmetics, and everything to play a different game year on year, the rest of the industry had already changed to free to play. In 2019, yeah, Fortnite true. was the biggest game in the world, and at the start of that year, Got Apex him. Legends launched. So we had two games destroying Overwatch at the same time, which were free to play and had all- Dude, Apex on release was so good. I remember I would play Apex every single day. It was so fucking fun, man. Like, and then after you were done playing, you would watch Ninja and Shroud play it. Remember how good that was? Oh, man. Oh, dude, it was so, so good. Apex is too sweaty now. That's just the way games are. They get too serious. Do you remember that one time I streamed Overwatch and then... I don't know if he's still in here, but Josh balanced out it. Uh, he's one of my mods. Fucking almost clutched up a 20 kill game and soloed the entire team and got to the very end of the game and lost like a 2v1. It was actually the most intense. It was like the first game that we had ever played on stream. Jeff was talking nuts. about for the sequel already free in the game. So Jeff wanted his sequel to bring all of the old players along with, so you could keep all your cosmetics and you'd still be able to play with the new players in Overwatch 2. We never really got the full explanation of what that meant because it didn't make any sense, but over the years, we were able to stitch it together. And what it was going to be is that the PVP would just get updated and the PVE would be an entirely separate Diablo game, That's what essentially, I it was be. with its yeah. own campaign and end game. And you would pay for that new experience, but you could also just stick to PVP if you wanted. They would be separate. That was always a competitive disadvantage, though, because at Activision Blizzard, they were a bit in a bubble with the box product model being so profitable for them. The writing was on the wall even at that point. Yeah, box price games are just not the meta anymore. The meta now is free-to-play games that have microtransactions. Because box price games work here, and box price games work here. But free-to-play games work here, free-to-play games work here, and they work here, and they work down here too. If the rest of the industry was on the box product model, then yeah, that would have been revolutionary. But with so many free-to-play games already robbing attention from Overwatch, that was going to be doomed to fail. And think about this from Jeff Kaplan's point of view. Uh -huh. He gets to be the scapegoat that goes on stage to overpromise yeah. this massive game that they're trying to make, that Aaron Keller cleared up on how audacious the vision of this was, that not only did Jeff want that, each hero having 30 to 50 talents in a PVE endlessly replayable no Diablo way. game. Behind the scenes, they wanted another higher, bigger game, a MMO game over that after they made Overwatch 2. That's what Overwatch 3... Yeah, that's what my expectation was going to be, is that they were going to transition Overwatch into being a game like Destiny. I had heard that from people before. I had hoped that was what was going to happen was going to be so at some point in the company based on the Not leaks that we know world. from sir yep. swag they're looking at the numbers of all of this and how jeff wants to scale this up and i'm assuming a suit said no in fact i'll give you less resources good luck doing whatever you want it always felt odd to me because jeff kaplan was i think it's also like just trying to make something like that work might be really really hard to do like i mean you can blame it on the executives anyway but i bet doing it's probably really hard so it would make sense that they would struggle with it a lot. I, I don't know. I don't think it's that big of a surprise. I think that uh, next uh, April 1st, Blizzard should announce Overwatch 3 and tell everybody that the PvP is coming for sure this time. <laughs> be like, guys, it's going to be for sure this time, guys. They're going to have talent trees and they're going to they're gonna have unique weapons too vice president of blizzard entertainment but It'll i think lit. as the coverage of the lawsuit and everything has gone on we all know that there's really just one king at activision blizzard 
it's Bobby. Every other position of leadership just seems to be a token. And hey, I mean, vice president was already probably a token position, but it felt strange that he couldn't have more pull to get what he wanted. But adding everything up now in hindsight, I think Jeff was looking down the barrel of the change of strategy that was being pushed onto him from top down, seeing everything that he wanted to build be reduced to rubble. And Jeff has to sit there and think, does he want to have to come out again and give this massive apology that he shouldn't have to make. I don't think Jeff would have probably, I mean, like you really look at it from his perspective, what this guy's saying really makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, th this really does make a lot of fucking sense. Have wanted to lie to us and say that PVE is coming and then months later down the line, Surprise! explain that it's in this diminished capacity after he had just years ago on stage promised the world. I can see why he'd want to leave for that. Let someone else have to tell those lies. He was not going to walk yep. the plank. Because while I have been on board for the free-to-play change, expensive cosmetics, I, I don't mind too. paying a battle pass because I yep. like the content I get in it. I enjoy it more than loot boxes. I like the seasonal model. I like the update cycle we have. I even will probably like the campaign. So it's not even really necessarily any of these decisions that I hate. Because I never needed a Diablo game for Overwatch because Diablo 4 was coming anyway. I like Diablo oh, 4. Yeah. I'll play Diablo 4 for Diablo. Game. The thing that I can't stand is the bait and switch. Is the lying. Is the thought that maybe I bought more skins thinking they were still making that big game that they did not tell us they have canceled when they knew yeah, they canceled. I think that's the way a lot of people are is they thought they were going to get, uh, you know, they, they would buy skins in the game and invest a lot into the game. Like, not, not invest as in money, but, like, play the game a lot and, you know, get attached to it because they knew that it was going to get a lot better. It's like people that, cut, like, imagine, like, they have a pre-patch for an expansion and WoW, and everybody resubs to play the game to get ready for the new expansion, and then Blizzard comes out and is like, guys, listen. Listen, we don't really have, listen, there's, making a video game is really hard, okay? It's the first thing I got to say. Second thing is that the new one is just, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, I mean, you know, you're still going to be able to level up. It's just, you, I mean, there's, no, you're not going to be able to go to the new zone. No, there's no new dungeon. So you can run the same dungeons and get experience again, though. That before they even launched yeah. Overwatch 2. They flew creators out like myself to show us all the amazing things they were doing for PvP. And when we kept nagging them, especially me, by the way, the most annoying of any of the creators, asking the hardest questions behind the scenes always, with only a few other of my peers that even come close to how much I hold Blizzard's feet to the fire, we kept nagging about PvE, and we never got a response. I don't think I've ever used a cuss word on this channel. Fuck you, oh, Blizzard. Didn't they get rid of this map? Fuck you. Fuck you for lying to my face and to all of our other Fuck creators. You, getting us on board with a strategy that you were not disclosing fully the changes and downgrades you were making. I am never trusting another thing you say ever again. Because I will have to admit, I was lured. This guy is fucking pissed, dude. I can't, that went zero to 60 real quick. God damn by the personality and goodwill from the people who are working on the front lines, but fooled into believing that they speak genuinely. They often do, but they also speak PR speak for Bobby Kotick like everyone else does at that company, and you can't expect anything more from that. I am beyond... Well, and that's not even really their fault. You've got to remember that these are employees. They are doing their job. And it sucks... You can be mad at him, but it's important to just like, not, I, I wouldn't take it too personally, okay? They're just following, or what are they going to do? Yeah, what are they going to do? And irate about how we as the entire community have been treated by Bobby Kotick. It's been his fault the entire way through, and the leaks just keep compounding. If you remember leaks from a while ago from an associate producer that went to Riot Games uh -huh. saying that Bobby Kotick would come down after telling the dev team to work on one big direction and switch gears entirely, ruining progress. Now on top of it, we have leaks saying that they would cut resources and make the project doomed to fail by having ridiculous expectations funded by starvation. Dude, remember how cool this cinematic was? Man, I remember me and McConnell, dude, we saw this shit and it was like, oh man, this is going to be awesome, guys.
Russian resource tactics. I'll end this rant today by reminding you Jeff Kaplan's final response before leaving the company, written almost as if it was on a napkin in lowercase. Jeff's oh, final out. personal note, he says, I'm leaving Blizzard Entertainment after 19 amazing years. It was truly the honor of a lifetime to have the opportunity to create worlds and heroes. Bro, people put more effort into leaving an esports team than this. He was just like, all right, yeah, I I I'm out. Such a passionate audience. I want to express my deep appreciation. People put more. How many of y'all ever had a guild where somebody would write a longer message of why they're leaving the guild? to everyone at Blizzard who supported our games, our game teams, and our players. But I want to say a special yeah. thanks to the wonderful game developers that shared in the journey of creation with me. Never accept the world as it appears to be. Always dare to see it for what it could be. I hope you do the same. GG, Jeffrey Kaplan. And of course, a notable exemption here. The silence on certain aspects of the company is deafening. Supporting his developers as he always did, and very clearly throwing shade at the suits that sabotaged his dream project so much so that he was willing to leave it after being one of the longest yeah, running sucks. developers at the company who helped build back in the day jeff jeff kaplan used to be the main dude in wow back in vanilla wow and bc and wrath and you know what he played he played a warrior those were some good days oh man those were some great days skyrocketing world of warcraft and transitioned yep. into another team to work on project titan which eventually transformed into overwatch and i can't help but imagine if bobby kotick was willing to pay himself less and the talented people making the things that make him all that money more if we could have just had more wonderful things probably Overwatch yeah. one was a beacon of hope in the game industry when there was a lot of also rand type shooter games out Overwatch 2 was supposed to be the walk, as Aaron Keller describes it. Instead, as we know, that vision will never be realized at this pace, at the level of commitment that Bobby Kotick is willing to give this dev team. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it a like, and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos come out. That's been it for me. I've been freed off your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time. Dude, this guy went so hard. Where he was like, you know what, Blizzard? Fuck you. Fuck you for lying to me. Fuck you for everything, man. I fucking hate you guys. Oh my god. My expectation of Overwatch and like my excitement for the game is pretty much at zero. Like, I, I have no enthusiasm for Overwatch anymore. Because I know what it's never gonna be. And maybe one day I will be, uh, I will be proven wrong. And I look forward to that day. But it certainly seems like that day is not going to come any fucking time soon, you know?